Hey everybody, Ben here from the Bonehead Podcast and welcome to Tournament Talk. We are looking at tournament rosters for all of the teams that have been spored in the Blood Bowl 2020 rulebook. We are aware that Blood Bowl tournaments tend to be different sizes and different skill packages. So what we're doing is we're looking at some 1.1 million builds and 1.2 million builds. The whole idea is you can add 50k, take away 50k to get to where you want to be. When it comes to skills, we are going to talk about some, but only the ones we think are the most important. So regardless of how many skills you get, you should be able to kind of marry up what we're saying to what you can take. So this is really about inspiring you um, to take some lists ready for next year when tournaments start to reopen and also to kind of prepare you for what you're going to be up against. And uh, we've got a very cool team today. We've got Chaos Renegades. So before we look at our first roster, there's a couple of things to mention about Chaos Renegades. You'll already know this if you've watched our starting rosters um, episode for, for, for Chaos Pact. So they can now take a Rat Ogre as well, but basically it's not to three big guys. So Troll, Ogre, Minotaur, Rat Ogre. So you get a choice of three of four of these big guys. So that gives you a lot of flexibility. Now the Rat Ogre is an absolute beast but is expensive as well so that the rat ogre is 150 so same price as the minotaur so you can fit the ogre the mino and the rat ogre in there it's going to be expensive so the troll still has a place on this team talking about things that have a place on the team we've also got a renegade human thrower now 75k 63 3 plus 3 plus 9 plus so not as good at passing as uh, the human thrower is for the human team it's got animosity all teammates pass and safe pair of hands which means that when that player goes down uh, you choose where the ball goes rather than scatter so it's it's slightly better than just being smashed to the ground but it does not have sure hands however its redeeming feature is that it gets a primary skill of gmp so general mutation and passing and that passing is realistically going to unlock um leader which is very useful because the re-rolls for this team are 70k so a human lineman is 50k a renegade thrower is 25 which means it's a 25k re-roll that comes with a pass safe pair of hands and animosity so thinking about it that way that's why you'll see him included in some of these lists don't take him if you don't want him and uh, you can probably find a way to balance out the measure but when we've got all of those delicious big guys to fit into this roster saving what 45k means instead of the troll you get the rat ogre so onwards to our first list we have got the classic 1100 so this roster comes in at 1085 we get the troll we get the ogre and we get the minotaur okay 1100 and you're running three big guys the troll goes on the line your ogre can go on the line or can play linebacker and that minotaur is there to blitz and just be a cruise missile for removal on top of that you get the human thrower the dark elf orc skaven and that goblin along with four linemen so what's that one two three four five six seven eight twelve players and two re-rolls so with this roster <laughs> you end up with 65k left you can't quite fit a re-roll in there i didn't want to downgrade the thrower or the dark elf you, you can do. I'd rather take the thrower, use that skill to get leader and still have enough cash left for that apothecary because if you look at this roster, each of the players is really important. The thrower and the dark elf are there to kind of be your ball carriers and you've got the troll, the ogre and the mino. Having that apothecary is going to mean you kind of get an extra go with those players. It's going to keep them on the pitch, which is going to be so important to your game plan. But like we said, two rerolls means that the the skill you really need to be looking for is leader on the thrower. This is a tier two team, so you should end up with an with a spare regular skill. You want to use your doubles on your big guys, realistically speaking. So you're gonna have a normal leftover and a normal spent on leader is gonna save you 45k for the rest of your roster, which basically is your apothecary. So onwards to skills. Troll and ogre. Basically the same skills. Block which is a double. We talked about doubles. Guard, because both of these bad boys are going to end up on the line. Brawler, if you've got a normal instead of a double, will still allow them to do some really solid stuff. I've put break tackle here, but that's really for the ogre. The ogre has a four plus agility. 
Break tackle now changed ever so slightly, but strength five or plus uh, strength five plus pieces get plus two to dodging. That means the ogre with break tackle is dodging on a two plus. That is tasty. The troll is a three plus, so less good. And what you can do instead with the troll is if you're going to run it, you're going to want it on the line. Tentacles on the troll is a pretty solid choice. It is a double, but it's going to do great stuff. And obviously you've got the option for uh, strong arm on either of those pieces to help you with the throw teammate option, which is why we've got this goblin here. And we've got the Minotaur, one of my favourite pieces in the game, to be honest with you. If you can get a double and chuck block on it, a blocking, blitzing, strength six, frenzy piece with <laughs> mighty blow is going to be absolutely delicious. You can take Juggernaut for a single. If not, realistically, you want to be blocking with the Minotaur wherever you can. Um, you can take Claw. Now, Claw and Mighty Blow don't stack anymore, which makes it less effective. Um, but you're still going to be able to break that armor on an 8+, plus and then have the Mighty Blow carry over onto the injury roll. So it got less good, but it is still very useful. So don't, don't write Claw off. And there's going to be someone with armor 8 on the team. Um, or someone at armor 9 or something kicking it around. It, it, it's going to be useful. So the thrower, we've spoken about this, leader. If you don't want the third reroll, and with Renegades, I really recommend you take at least three rerolls. I think three is fine. You just have to play well. I mean, that's the plan here, isn't it? Um, on the ball is also not bad. It will get your offense going, and uh, just going to give three squares for that thrower to get the ball. For the Dark Elf, dodge. It can take agility on a regular, making a movement seven, agility two plus uh, dodge piece. Oh, it's only movement six. Still, Agility 2+, plus, um, Passing 3+, plus. the Dark Elf is really, really, really useful. Um, it's got Passing of 3+, plus as well, so it's going to be able to farm the ball off if necessary. Still not on a 2+, plus. still not automatic, but going to be throwing as well as a thrower. So you've got two pieces there that can kind of deal with the ball. I would rather use the Dark Elf as a ball carrier slash receiver um, and as a backup for your, um, your, your quarterback, essentially. Dodge, therefore, makes it very useful. And block is not going to go amiss either because Agility 2 Plus is pretty great. For the Orc, you get strength on a general access. No, you don't. Ah, oh, that's gone. That's sadness. It's general and mutation. So uh, for the Orc, realistically, you're kind of looking at block uh, or spending a double to get guard. On the line as well, I mean, the front line really can look something like one or two human linemen, your troll slash ogre or both and the orc because they are going to be uh, resilient and they're going to take a punching as well as deliver it. So giving an orc, giving the orc block is going to be useful for you. Uh, Skaven, however, can be a really interesting piece. You can give it extra arms on a regular to give it two plus agility to pick up or to catch. So the Skaven becomes another kind of ball mover slash uh, ball carrier receiver. So you kind of got the thrower, the dark elf and the Skaven there who are all reasonably effective at moving the ball. Um, alternatively, you can use the Skaven as kind of your safety. Giving it wrestle and movement seven means that it can run around and when it needs to, it can take down a piece. But the most exciting piece on this entire team, and that's a team with so many big guys, is the Goblin. This goblin is just phenomenally useful. Okay, you've got the throw teammate angle, that's absolutely certain. But that stunty 3 plus dodge means it's just going to run around doing stuff. And you can make it even better by giving it two heads on a general. That's going to be plus one to dodging, which means it is dodging two plus forever everywhere. <laughs> which with movement six makes it one of the best ball carriers um, in the game. Okay, that's the fastest with a two plus invincible reroll. Alternatively, or maybe additionally, depending on the rules of your tournament, Big Hand is going to allow it to just pick up the ball with and ignoring all tackle zones. And Horns, if you want to use your Goblin to Blitz, because 3 plus into a cage, <laughs> going up to strength 3, can actually be quite effective. Last but not least, you've got the Lyman. Now, the Lyman did also lose strength access on a general, so you're not going to end up with a bunch of guard spam, but they are not bad with block, and kick can be really effective with this team. We've already spoken about the Goblin, so if you drop that ball close, that Goblin, if he's got big hands uh, or uh, two heads, it's actually got a really good chance of just six squaring it in and onto that ball and back. It's, it's re ridiculously uh, reliable, actually. It's risky play, but... Think about it. If your front line is three big guys, 
<laughs> if you can get an onside kick, using that goblin to sneak through and grab the ball, or even just to harass, and you don't even need to risk throwing him makes it really useful now the goblin is vulnerable the dark elf is vulnerable the skaven is very vulnerable and quite frankly the minotaur for a big guy with only armor eight is also vulnerable that is why i recommend the apothecary if you can afford it you just kind of get free rolled another one of your positionals that goblin is going to get targeted by your opponent and as is the minotaur probably that reroll at uh, that reroll that apothecary is going to keep him around and battling which is what you need but we do need to talk about the other big guy. In the room, we've got the Rat Ogre. So there is a slightly different roster where you drop your 12th person. So you go down to 11 players, you drop that lineman. And you upgrade the troll to the Rat Ogre. Now the Rat Ogre, skills-wise, going to be the same as the Minotaur slash the Ogre. This is a combat piece. The troll is good to stand on the line, take punches, and then throw a teammate. The Rat Ogre is going to do none of that. The Rat Ogre is going to murder stuff. So if you want to have a Minotaur Blitzing and a Rat Ogre on the line Frenzy Chasing, you can absolutely do it. I am a huge fan of Rat Ogres in the new edition. I think they are going to be um, really effective. They've got Animal Savagery, which means you can Blitz with them and you can block with them and you can move with them. But the worst case scenario, they're going to get angry and then you can either punch one of your own guys next door, which can be risky on this team because you don't have a lot of players, or it loses its tackle zones. So it's kind of 50-50 as to whether it's an upgrade or not. I like it, but on the Renegade team, you don't have a huge dearth of players because you want the best ones on the pitch. So while the Rat Ogre, with its Frenzy, Mighty Blow and Prehensile Tail, makes it really, really deadly, and you've got uh, the standard access there where you can give it claws on a double or block on a double to make it more effective, you've got to be very careful with the Mino with Frenzy and the Rat Ogre with Frenzy. You're going to rack up block dice, which can be good and it can also be bad. So we've looked at two, uh, two of the standard lists for 1100. We've talked about what you can squeeze in at the lowest, basically, tournament value you're probably going to end up playing against. Anything on top of that, you just can add rerolls, add regular guys, and you're just going to build your team up. But if you are at 1100, you can sneak in one of the most exciting star players that we have available in Blood Bowl 2020, which is Hack Flem Shuttle Spike. So with this roster, you get Hack Flem, the Ogre, the Minotaur, the Throw of the Dark Elf, the Orc, the Skaven, the Goblin, and four linemen. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven players. Two rerolls. So remember, we talked about leader on the thrower to get you that third reroll. So you get two big guys. You get the Dark Elf, the Skaven, and the Thrower to maneuver the ball. You get the Orc and the four linemen to gum up the ground. You get the Goblin to do shenanigansy kind of things. And then if all else goes wrong, you've got Hack Flem Shuttle Spike, who is an absolute machine. Movement 9, Strength 3, Agility 2+, Passing 3+, Armor 8+, so a little bit vulnerable, but does come with Dodge, Extra Arms, which means Agility 1+, for catching and picking up the ball. Lona 4+, eh, we're used to that by now. Prehensile Tail and 2 Heads, which means he's dodging on a 1+, as well. It's as a borderline agility 5 in old school money, strength 3 gutter runner. As a Skaven coach, that is very exciting to me. And it's 180k as well, so essentially what you have to do is drop the troll, drop a lineman, get a star player gutter runner. You massively increase your score ability. Uh, also, Hackflem does have a special ability. Once per game, if a teammate in an adjacent square to Hackflem has the ball... When Hackflem is activated, that player may be knocked down and Hackflem may take possession of the ball. No turnover is caused as a result of using this special rule. So we've talked about the fact that some of our players have animosity, especially the human thrower. Hackflem isn't a teammate, so it doesn't matter anyway. But why risk the handoff when you can just go and stand a dude next to Hackflem? <laughs> And when Hack Flem activates, he can just punch him down and take the ball himself. That is guaranteed once per game handoff action. Absolutely fantastic. It creates some great stretch plays for Hack Flem. And you're going to really, really, really struggle to stop this team from scoring. And quite frankly, if they're not scoring with the Ogre and the Minotaur on the pitch, they're doing some damage. This team has got some serious offense. And I love the inclusion of Hack Flem. Um, it's thematic. And it's winning. 
But let's ramp it up to 1,200. You can fit Lord Borak in here at 1,180. So Lord Borak, one Ogre, one Minotaur. Sorry, Troll. Uh, one Thrower, one Dark Elf, one Orc, one Skaven, one Goblin. Everything we said about those pieces are true. Four Linemen and two Rerolls. So you don't even have to give up that much. You upgrade your Troll to Lord Borak. Now, Lord Borak himself is a Strength 5 piece. Movement 5, Strength 5, Agility 3+, plus, Pass 4. 5 plus, armor 10 plus, block, dirty player plus 2, so remember that, loner, mighty blow, and uh, mighty blow 1, and sneaky git, which means he can run, foul, and carry on running. So you upgrade your troll to a strength 5 piece with no nega trait. Still got loner, but no nega trait, and comes with block and mighty blow. So all of that is great, but also Lord Borat comes with one reroll. Comes with one reroll that you can use either in the first half, and if you don't use it in the first half, you use it in the second half. So it comes with like half a reroll as well, which means that if you take leader and you take these two rerolls, you end up with three and a half rerolls a half. And Lord Borak, which is going to be significantly more reliable than your troll. This roster is super, super strong. It is probably one of the strongest rosters we will see. Obviously, ogres can take six ogres. And that's a lot of strength. But this roster has got that and actual players as well. Sorry, it's not links. Um, uh, sorry, sorry, Noblars. Let's let's get that straight. So Borak at 1200 is going to be superb. And it gives you a great opportunity to pick up a cool model to represent Borak as well. Basically a big guy. I love it. And last but not least, we have this star player duo known as Grack and Crumbleberry. And what did they bring to the team? So at 1200, you can fit Grack and Crumbleberry in for 1170. Grack and Crumbleberry, and an Ogre, and a Minotaur, the Thrower, the Dark Elf, the York, the Skaven, the Goblin, and four Linemen, with two rerolls, like we've already discussed. So you're going to need that leader to take the third. But what this does give you is a, it gives you two Ogres. It gives you a two Ogre duo, which means you can kick and you can throw. And it gives you the Goblin and Crumbleberry. And Crumbleberry coming with sure hands just makes this team work a little bit better. So essentially, you're upgrading your troll to Grack. So you're upgrading a troll to a minor, uh, to a to an Ogre. And the Ogre comes with Kick Teammate, which is very beneficial because you've got the option of throw and kick with two stunty players. And quite frankly, it doesn't have to be the same. It doesn't have to be different stunty players. You can just kick the goblin up towards and up towards the ogre and then throw it. Because you can now throw and kick stuff that's on the ground, which is very useful. So you get two ogres instead of an ogre and a minotaur. That is a significant improvement. But on top of that, it comes with a halfling with sure hands. And none of these players here on this roster have sure hands. So it's going to save your reroll and another stunty piece. I, It definitely feels less murdery. I mean, if you want to go big style, then uh, the quite frankly, the Rat Ogre, the Ogre and the Minotaur are going to give you all the murderings you want. And if you ramp that list up to 1200, you may even be able to sneak in Helmet Wolf to mop up afterwards. But Grack and Crumbleberry is going to give you just that third big guy. And two of those big guys are going to be pretty, pretty reliable. And then you get the stunty angle as well, which does boost the game up a little bit. It's just an it's just a big guy that comes with a boost and it's going to make this team work even better. That is it for Chaos Renegades rosters. There are so many alternatives, I think. There's a load you can do. You can drop this, drop that. I went for max power because realistically, if you're going to be running Renegades, you want to have three big guys. That is the point of the team. There's a couple of star players that you might be able to fandangle a third, uh, sorry, a fourth big guy in there, but you're going to end up having no rerolls and, and all your uh, all your um, specialist players are going to be gone, and that makes the team really tough. If you're going to if you want to do that, uh, take snotlings, take ogres instead. You'll get the big guys and you'll get the big guy rush. Uh, I would probably recommend that if that's what you want from Blood Bowl. If you want an absolute mix of teams mix of players mix of models mix of play styles and you want to be fighting to pull it together while also having an insane amount of deadly threat renegades are there you've got borak you can take you've got grack you can take you've got hack phlegm you can take to seriously win games and that 1100 roster just gets better at 1150 and 1200 so i'm really excited 
the skills for these teams are massive. You've got so much variety. You can do an absolute ton with Chaos Renegades. And I, I am really genuinely excited about this roster as well in Blood Bowl 2020. Um, I just think all the teams have got so exciting and Renegades have got so much choice. You can really make the team yours. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up this video now. Let me know in the comments below what you think of Renegades. Let me know if there's another list or two there that you think I've missed or that you think you would prefer because I genuinely love to hear from you guys. Um, but for now, I'm going to disappear and we'll see you again tomorrow for more Blood Bowl content. Thanks for watching.